Hello, it's day three, um, happy African History Month. I just wanted to do a quick recap yesterday, uh, about yesterday's video. Um, the lighting was, was, was pretty bad in it, uh, so in case you didn't watch it, or, you know, I'm just going to quickly fill in uh, the details. It was about trivia versus history. Because uh, in many black history curriculums, there's a lot of focus on sports. Um, oh, this is the first black person to play in the major leagues. This is the, this person scored this many points. This, you know, all things that I think are better term trivia than history uh, because they don't have any historical significance. Now that's not to say that no sports figure, uh, no um, black sports figure had uh, engaged in or lived lives that weren't historically significant. But it's not going to be because of the amount of points they scored. You know they, um, you know, did something inside. You know their perspective, respective. Um, sports field, sporting field. That's why if you take a look at somebody like Muhammad Ali, this is an individual who had a his, historically significant life because his activity took place in spite of the, the ring, in spite of, you know, the sport. Um, he was very politically active, took stances, and his career was put in jeopardy because of it. And that's the lesson I think that we need to take from this um, today, where there's, even today, sports figures are being, their livelihoods, their um, careers are being threatened if they take political stances by the people who are cutting the checks. So there's a lesson in there. That's not, that may be nice, you know, reaching a certain level of um, fame or status within a sports field, but that's not, there's more. There's more we should be um, striving for, and that's in terms of being the person cutting the checks, not just the person cashing the check. Um, so that that way nobody is able to control um, our political activity or squash our political activity on the basis of our being dependent upon them uh, to get paid. And that clearly would go beyond uh, sports, um, you know, sports figures as well, but the lesson there remains and something we need to pay close attention to and uh, work towards, um, understand what we're considering significant and what we're considering how we're defining success. So to fast forward to today, um, and I want to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the things that have uh, some of my experiences during Black History Month and um, Black History Months prior that have led me to um, want to be here and, and do this uh, for this month. Um, like, like I said, this started while I was inside. I remember my first um, Black History Month experience inside came at the end of the month. Um, I was at a um, institution where the staff had worked in conjunction with you know inmates to put together a show um, an event which included you know um, you know speaking you know on certain various issues um, poetry which I actually um, performed a poem uh, poetry I wrote and performed an original poem um, in honor of Black History Month. Uh, but this all took place 
you know, one day. This was the a day culminating, um, you know, the Black History Month celebration. At the one of the later um, spots I was at institution, and I hadn't I had forgotten what how um, everything had transpired. I remembered that we, the inmates, actually um, several of us were were the ones that organized this event, um, and we made it so that it was throughout the month. We had classes. Um, we had a class, so we tried to have as many days as possible um, to secure space um, in the education department, so that boom, this day, this is our topic. This day, uh, following day, this was our topic. So we had yeah, we had a um, Black History calendar, so that um, almost every day. We had uh, a class and the topic um, prepared for um, the population. Um, it's it's interesting though that how that came to be was I I was looking at a Twitter post yesterday, and a person um, was recounting one of their colleagues, um, who's a, a black attorney. Apparently they got, they had given her some, I mean, in honor of Black History Month, a baby Groot doll with, um, with a, like a colorful bandana, um, <laughs> uh, this little, this, this thing saying happy Black History Month and uh, grape Kool-Aid hanging from its wrist. And that's what sparked the memory of actually how we um, came to take uh, over the the inmates. Um, We're at the institution, and at the particular time, staff was the one that organized um, and took the lead in this event. And I remember the staff member... um, had, you know, he was feeling really proud of himself because he had gotten some material um, together for us that he he gave to us. Um, So this was like the first day of, you know, the Black History Month celebration. We go into the classroom and he hands out these, um, like, uh, brochures, um, Black History Month brochures, magazines. Booklets. Booklets would be a great term. Um, and when I start opening it, I realize it's, it's a coloring book. So I stop. I look around. And uh, I see a couple of other people, you know, like kind of bewildered, you know, scratching their head like, coloring book? Then at next he hands out lollipops that, you know, a lollipop for each of us to go with the um, with the, the the coloring booklet, and I stop. Excuse me. Now these Black History booklets that you've handed out, these are coloring books. Are these for us? Or are these for our kids? I'm giving them benefit of the doubt here, yeah, hoping that he's giving us something. You know, like this, you know, to send uh, uh, home to our kids, you know, whether we have kids, nieces, nephews, whatever. But something that would be useful for them, you know, to get them to start talking about black history um, and, and you know, excited to learn stuff. And in that question, I'm giving him the right answer. But no, he still didn't get it. He was just so pleased with himself. And no, no, that's for you guys. Um, and he like he really was feeling very proud of himself for having a room full of uh, adult <laughs> uh, convict convicts, um, coloring books, and lollipops. 
we roasted the hell out of him. I mean, I mean, at that moment, like it just we just went in, and that was his last day um, running the the Black History Program. From that moment, we took over because we said, "No, this is this is not happening. This is ridiculous." Um, and from that point on, we said, "We'll handle this." He 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 felt like we felt embarrassed because. Quite frankly, he needed to feel embarrassed. It was absolutely and utterly ridiculous. But uh, it's it's funny that 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 experience is not was not you know uh, localized to us in that prison. You have here on Twitter in what 2018 a a lawyer in Florida um, receiving just ridiculous. Um, gifts in celebration of Black History Month that just so the the the, the need not just <laughs> the need for other people to, to, to start educating themselves about Black History because and it, and really I, I don't think it necessarily would even should even take necessarily education about Black History just some awareness um, and some some empathy to be able to say, wait a minute, is this, you know, is this insulting? How would I feel? You know, just putting themselves um, in our shoes. And and in that case, yeah, some education will, would be necessary to, to be able to be aware of certain things being very condescending and insulting um, not congratu- congratulatory, but uh, yeah, that 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 was the <laughs> the evolution of how we came to take over, and we wanted to make sure that we didn't do the regular thing. Um, administration wasn't thrilled about it, but we we were some very intelligent. Um, we, we we approached it from a very intelligent. Um, in a very intelligent manner, we, you know, organized and we had ground rules because we knew there was, um, it was very easy and, and uh, the administration would be willing to pull the plug very easily and, and, and very eager to do so if, oh no, there's a threat, you know, to the institution, to safety. So we laid down the ground rules and didn't allow um, anybody to turn, you know, these educational courses into foolishness. And people tried. A couple of people tried, uh, but we, we shut that nonsense down. But that's what, you know, that's what that's what I see this as um, an opportunity to do, to change the to make sure it's not just surface and shallow, you know, facts, you know, useless, empty facts being just tossed out there um, that have no benefit, no real world application, no, um, no significance for our lives in the present going forward. Because the purpose of history is to learn something from it. Um, and I'm seeing the need right now for for so much for education um, because there's a lot of people that don't realize that stuff that's going on right now isn't new. It's it's happened before, it's happening again, but failure to be aware of the history, failure to know the history will have somebody thinking, um, oh, this is just a new thing. And and not really appreciating the significance of uh, events happening right now today. So that's that's it for day three of African History Month. Um, I'll be putting together a calendar for um, you know the 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 month. Um, it should be ready because I want to uh, have specific days and specific events. And I'll be putting that, posting that out to the channel and uh, 
I'm putting that on social media so that, hey, there's certain certain days that you may really want to follow and that you may really want to uh, check out the the video for that day, you know, based on the topic. Um, so I'll have that ready in a couple of days. And uh, thank you for joining me for day three. I'll see you tomorrow.